It's 9 o'clock at WWRR Scranton Wilkesbury. This is a Decades Artist Spotlight. Hi, this is Marcus Thompson from Primex Social Club. Look at all these rumors surrounding me every day. I just need some time, some time to get away. Hey, this is Vicki Peterson of the Bangles. Just another Hey, this is Paul Robb from Information Society. I want to know what you're thinking. There are some things you can't hide. I want to know what you're feeling. Tell me what's on your mind. And you're listening to Decades. You are listening to Decades. And you're listening to Decades with Joey Crane. This is the Decades Artist Spotlight. Now, here's Joe E. Kramer with this week's artist. All right, we got a Decades Artist Spotlight in full effect this week. And uh, our artist tonight is none only than Ted Poley from Danger Danger and a great new band called Tokyo Motor Fist. And Ted was at M3 uh, Festival last week. He even subbed in uh, with Faster Pussycat. He was calling him Faster Poley Cat, so. Yeah, we all know about Ted, and uh, it's a good interview. He's a great guy, very gracious, and I'm going to play it for you coming up next. Let's start with Danger Danger. Rock America!
is the Decades Artist Spotlight with Joe E. Kramer, this week's artist. It's another Decades Artist Spotlight, and tonight with me is the frontman to one of my favorite all-time bands, Danger Danger, and one of my favorite new bands, Tokyo Motor Fist, the one and only Mr. Ted Poley. How you doing, Ted? Joey, how are you, man? Feel the fist. Your motor fist. You're early on that, man. That is fan. I want to. I want to talk about them because I've been playing their music a lot on my show. But I got to start out by telling you something that I don't know. It'll probably make you feel maybe a little bit old, but I'll tell you anyway. I have a 19 year old and a 15 year old daughter, and most kids when they're little, they want to hear all kinds of you know like kid music, whatever. When they were three, four years old, we'd get in the car, and the first thing they would say is, put on Bang Bang, Dad. Put on Bang Bang. <laughs> That's awesome, and there's nothing that you could possibly say that could make me feel any older than I already do. But I want to talk about the new band, obviously, but let's talk uh, a little bit about your start here, because you started as a drummer, and you were in a band called Profit. So talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get into the, uh, the Danger Danger. Actually, I really started at about four years old on piano, um, but that goes way back. Way back. Yeah, way, way back. And then, uh, yeah, I took up drums later on, became uh, a drummer, and got my first record deal as a drummer in the band Prophet, um, which is like a prog band, awesome guys, um, some of which are passed on now, but um, I miss them. Uh, but awesome, awesome band, and uh, definitely provided me with the chops and everything else that I needed to uh, become a very serious musician. And then, then I could become a less serious musician now. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> so how did, that, how did that morph into Danger Danger? Uh, that didn't morph at all into Danger Danger. The only um, no, I mean you you morphed into Danger Danger, not not well, so much. I mean, yeah, I'm still morphing as we speak. Actually, the way that actually there is a connection. Um, I was actually in profit at the time doing sound check um, at a club called Lemore, which was uh, a famous rock club in Brook in Brooklyn. And uh, at the time, Bruno Ravel was in a band called White Lion, which rehearsed in the basement of. Lamore, and he heard me doing sound check. I was actually singing, and said the singer didn't show up early for sound check, so I used to sing from behind the drums, and I did the sound check as a singer. And uh, he was looking for a singer, I guess, and he came running up. He heard me sing, and he's like, "Who's that singing?" And uh, I was like, "Me, sir." <laughs> and, uh, he's like, "Hey, I want you to come and you know, you know, sing some stuff for me." And I was like, "No way, I don't want to be a." lead singer i like it behind my drums i like the wall of drums i'm actually kind of shy in real life i'm like no way i'm getting out there being some kind of fruity front manner <laughs> this is not my thing i like bashing the crap out of stuff and uh he's like well just do the demos sing on the demos and i came to uh i went to a, a basement in long island where we did the original danger danger demos which turned out to be al petrelli's basement the original original guitar player from danger danger and we did some of these early songs like rock america and I forget what else was on those first demos, but I fell in love with the music so much that eventually when Prophet faced a second record deal uh, with having me as a drummer, I decided I'd rather go with this unsigned band called Danger Danger um, rather than take a for sure record deal as a drummer again. And I loved the guys and I loved the band, but um, but Danger Danger was new and the stuff I sang on was just so cool and I had to be in there even at the expense of my drum set. So the rest is history. I stepped out front and we got a deal pretty fast and... Um, and that's that. So great interview. Good speaking with you. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. <laughs> and actually, I think this interview so far, the answer to that question took longer than the rest. Of my no, life. that they because hey, you know Danger Danger was odd because they were you know you guys were lumped into that whole hair metal scene at the end of the nineties, which eighties, which I loved. But you guys were more melodic rock. You were more like Journey. I you know I compared you to Journey and even Toto bands like that more than some of the bands that were out there because as you know they were out there. I mean they were by the end of the eighties. Every band with a long hair was getting signed to a record deal. Yeah, and a lot of them, you know, you know, God bless them all, and everybody was trying real hard. But we were actual musicians. But I started out on classical piano when I was age four. Um, I mean, you know, Bruno was schooled at, at Juilliard. You know, we're not we're no slouch musicians. We had, you know, Andy Timmons on guitar. You know, we could actually really play, and that's what put us over. Was uh, when we got the chance to perform in front of live audiences, which we did. You know, thanks to Kiss and Alice Cooper and all the those awesome bands, they provided us with. Huge audiences that we could then actually show them that we could play, and that's really what um, made us, uh, you know, what we were and kept us around today. Because people knew not only did we play on the records, but alive we excelled. You know, we all could really slam our instruments. See, back then, all you need to do is you need to look good. Yeah, you know, you have to look good to get in the door. But and that was a shame because, but you know, there were 
millions of talented guys that there was. probably couldn't get a deal because they didn't look right or their hair fell out too young or something. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> and that is a shame because that's the world's loss, you know. Um, but that is the way it was. But that didn't get you very far back then. You really then had to do a good album and then you had to really... Um, album i guess record album for all of you listeners out there that don't know what a record album oh the record album it, it's a round thing with music on it made out of dinosaurs anyway um now that now it's now it's all digital but back then we made things called called records and um you know it, it was uh, you had to make a good record then you had to go out and kick ass to support it and we did all of those things and uh that's why we're still around today but a lot of bands not only didn't play on their records back then but then they couldn't also reproduce or kick ass live and those are the ones that are not around anymore. And let's talk about that first album because two two albums that you know really stung, stood out for me for Danger Danger were the first two. The debut, Screw It. The first one, though, Bang Bang, Rock America, Naughty Naughty, One Step from Paradise, Turn It On, Don't Walk. There wasn't a bad song on that first album. I mean, it was incredible. I remember when I, I remember I bought it. I was uh, seventeen years old, and I, I still have the original copy of it on vinyl. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Again, nobody, I guess vinyl's coming back now, but for a couple of decades, you know, nobody knew what that was. Yeah, it's funny because you look at vinyl now and you look at people's web, uh, on their, the website or on Amazon, whatever, and it says, you know, CD, ten ninety nine, vinyl, $35. Yeah, I remember when you could go to, like, uh, some of the, you know, record stores when I was a kid, and, you know, you get them for, like, I think it was, like, two ninety nine. You know, actually, they would list for like seven forty nine, but you get them for like three ninety nine back then. It was like, yeah, well, you're getting a big deal because you, oh, look, mom, this was eight dollars, but I got it for three dollars. So don't yeah, worry. For three bucks, yeah, for three bucks, you almost didn't have to steal it anymore. So that was cool. And that first tour, you were out with Warrant, which I remember that because I saw Warrant with Danger Danger. This was back in the late eighties. And it, that first tour, uh, we went up. To, what, was it in Canada? Right North, through Canada, or? through Canada. I was in. I was on uh, vacation, I guess it was my senior year or my junior year, and I think we went to Montreal, somewhere around there. And that's oh, when that's I, cool. I first saw them, and I first saw you and Warren in concert, and I took my, my girlfriend, who's now my wife, and she wasn't really big into that music, but I convinced her to go, and it was incredible. Well, good segue, because I'll be actually in Toronto with my solo band. Please come out um, at the Rock Pile. I hope everybody will hear this in Canada, and everybody will make a bus trip over there. I rarely get to play there anymore, so come on out. But that Montreal show, believe it or not, I think was um, my first concert ever that I ever did as a lead singer. Oh, really? I actually did. I think one right before it, maybe at the Ritz in New York City. I don't remember what the deal was, but I really had never come out front. And so... That night in Montreal um, was the beginning of that Danger Danger tour, which then went all across entire Canada and then down through the western United States. We came down through, um, you know, Washington and Oregon and everything. Um, it was a long, long tour. <laughs> I left, I left uh, my home for months. Um, but that Canadian tour was actually our first huge tour. It was with Warren to Cheney. It was awesome to me. He used to bring me out um, for their encore every night I, on his shoulders. So... He used to sing with me on his shoulders. He was a strong guy and uh, very nice to me. You know, it's cool to bring the, you know, the warm-up guy, you know, out with you at the end of your show. And it was really cool and uh, glad you were there, man. I've been driving for an hour Just talking to the rain You say I've been driving you crazy And it's keeping you away So just give
spotlight is on. This week's Decades Artist Spotlight continues. Now, here's Joe E. Kramer with this week's artist. We are on Spotlight this week with Ted Poley of Danger Danger and uh, his new side project, Tokyo Motor Fist, which the album is out in stores right now. Um, again, it's a big seller in Finland. Finland loves their hair metal. And if you love melodic rock, and, you know, the, the sound of the 80s and the 90s. You will love Tokyo Motor Fist. Uh, we're going to play something off that new release coming up in just a bit. Of course, we're going to have the second part of the interview. And we can't do a Danger Danger thing without Bang Bang. Man, that's coming up next. This is Decades. The Decades Artist Spotlight with Ted Foley continues next right here on 105 The River, 104.9 and 100.7 FM. 1340 AM around the world at 105theriver.net. Decades with JoeyKramer.com and the Radio Bold app for your iPhone or Android device. Hang on. This is the Decades Artist Spotlight. Northeast PAs, wanna fight the river. Artist Spotlight continues. 
And now, here's Joe E. Kramer with this week's artist. We are on the Decades Artist Spotlight, and of course, this week we are here with Ted Poley, Danger Danger, and Tokyo Motor Fist. You just heard Bang Bang. That's their most well-known song, of course. And I, I remember that. Where I live anyway, back in 89, 90, that was like number one for weeks on the nightly countdown in radio. It was just played nonstop. And, of course, on MTV as well. So let's get back to um, be talking to Ted Foley of Danger Danger on the Decades Artist Spotlight. And we're talking the second album, uh, Screw It, which I should say that's the album everybody got screwed on because you, that was when you kind of started to, things started to fall apart a little. And it's a shame because it was a good album. I mean, Coming Home was one of my favorites. I'll still uh, think about you, another one. But things started to kind of get, how would you, how would you describe it? They weren't as good as they were on the first album. Things sort of t- kind of uh, fall. They were, they, uh, they were fine as far as I was concerned. The world all of a sudden started growing. Going exactly. Wearing flannel and uh, the light switch <laughs> went off and that was it. And, you know, I uh, never uh, understood that because we had all this great music out there. And like in the pay, you'd go to see these bands and six months earlier you're playing you know, in front of 20,000, 30,000 people. And all of a sudden MTV says, okay, this isn't what's cool anymore. And by back then MTV did have some influence. Not like today. But... Uh, Everybody took this godforsaken grunge music, which I absolutely hated. And all of a sudden, all these bands were just like pulled out the back door. Well, um, back door, that's a good reference. That's where I think grunge <laughs> actually came from. I think it's the worst music ever. Oh, I do. I do. Honestly, I think it was more of an attitude at the time. I'd be surprised if it ever makes a resurgence. I couldn't imagine. Like right now, I do things like the Monsters of Rock Cruise, where I go out with you know, 4,000 of the most rabid, awesome, melodic rock fans, hair band fans, they're just, what an awesome time we have. Um, it's just the best time you can have. And could you imagine, like, going on a grunge... The monsters. Cruise? I mean, what, what do you want to do? Like, halfway through, you want to just throw yourself over the side? Yeah, I mean, unbelievable. And, yeah, sorry, please forgive my phone. I've got a radio station waiting there, and they're just all, everybody's calling. Today. No problem. Um, that Tokyo Motor Fist thing is heating up. That's what it is. So. Well, that's the thing I want to talk about. You not only Danger Danger, your solo albums... You had you know Beyond the Fade last oh, yeah. year, which was fantastic. We are young stars. There was a song called Hands of Love, which I know was a demo for Danger Danger early on, and you uh, wrote with uh, Joel Lynn Turner from Rainbow. Is that correct? Um, actually, Joel Lynn Turner wrote it with uh, Tony Bruno, the Ray of Fame, and actually he was the first guitar player um, to record with Danger Danger. We actually didn't find Andy Timmons till the end of the recording of that first album. So Tony Bruno is all over that thing. That's actually him doing a lot of those awesome leads, and he. And Joel Dean Turner had a song called Hands of Love that um, I think they submitted for Danger Danger, and I loved it. I thought it was a great song. Um, and we ended up just not using it for one reason or another. And I always, you know, Joe is a real good friend of mine and one of my heroes. I just love him um, as a singer. He's one of my idols, and it's kind of fun to get to, <laughs> to have him as a really great friend now. And every time I run, ran into him, I'd say, I'm going to do that song, man. And other people had covered it, but um, I always remember Joe's version. And uh, finally, when given the chance, you know, on this latest um, CD, Beyond the Fade, uh, to do something, I'm like, oh, I want to do, you know, Hands of Love, because I was going to do an album that sounded, you know, big and had the big choruses and the big guitars, and I said, that song would be perfect. And I finally got a chance to do it, so thanks for mentioning that one. That's one of my favorites from the Beyond. And it's funny, because people will say Hands of Love sounds like Bang Bang, but actually Bang Bang sounds like Hands of Love. Ah, see, you get it. See, flip it over. That's that's the real thing. Now, now, I, what I really want to talk about is Tokyo Motor Fist because this band, I got Frontier sent me. They sent me. They always send their, their great people there at Frontier, and and they sent me. They sent me a lot of promo stuff. And when I got Tokyo Motor Fist, I didn't look at it at first and think, oh, what, what is this supposed to? What is this? I never heard of this. And then I saw your name, and I'm thinking, uh, well, it's got to be melodic, so I'm gonna like it. And man, I listened to that album. And I was just blown away. The first song I played by on my show was Shameless. And oh, cool. people loved it. I mean, this, nothing, it's, nothing has changed. That melodic sound is still there. You're not trying to overdo it. So talk a little bit about Tokyo Motor Fist and how that came about. Man, well, thank you, first of all. It's actually exciting to still be able to do something. Um, <laughs> you know, after I think I've done about 30 or 30. Yeah, you're involved with everything. Full length. Yeah, full length. Um, albums, you know, not even counting guest stuff or the Sega, you know, the Sonic the Hedgehog video, right. stuff, which is really like 30 full albums, and then to be um, involved in something so cool now that I actually love and think is one of my best things after that many um, tries. <laughs> it's, it's, it is. It's incredible. It's right? And it's, you keep that fun. sound, you keep that sound alive, that, that 80s rock sound is there. You're not well, trying to change we, anything. Well, thank you. We actually did, you know, consciously go for that big 
sound, it sort of sounds like almost, I call it like Ted Leopard. It sounds like Def Leopard because we've got some awesome players. I mean, of course, Steve Brown of Trickster and of so much more. He's, he produced it, did an amazing job. Um, he actually guests with Danger Danger now as our guitar player. He's an incredibly talented guy, but he, he's the guitar player. Then we have Chuck Berge on drums, who's Billy Joel's drummer. Um, and, we, you know, we have Greg Smith on bass, who's a good friend of mine, lives nearby, and he also he plays, well, basically in everybody. But uh, he's with Ted Nugent, of course, now. And together he and Chuck were uh, the rhythm section for Rainbow at one point. So... Uh, it's just an honor to play with guys of this caliber, really fun, and when presented with that opportunity, you know, I said immediately yes, um, and I love Frontiers, and what they're doing, you're right, is uh, is the best at the moment. Frontiers uh, is, is carrying this, this, they're keeping this music alive, and, you know, yeah, I t- I yeah. it, it's incredible with the stuff that they're putting out there, and like, not just Shameless, but Get off, uh, get You Off My Mind, I, I just played this past week, picking up the pieces I've played, um, Falling Apart is another uh, one I love off that album, and yeah, I like the song called Love. You didn't even mention Yeah, that. I didn't. I'm sorry. That's my favorite. There's yeah, so no, many. Okay. There's, I, from start to finish, and I've been playing a different one each week. And, I mean, the, I, and I always say it, you know, Ted Poley from Danger Danger. And, you know, this is the project, and people are starting to talk about it and asking me where they can get it. And I'm saying, well, you can't get it yet. It's coming. It's, no, it's not even out yet. I get the pre-sales. I always get a bunch for my fans that like a personal autograph copy because I stay in close contact with all my fans. And, you know, I'm easy to get to, and I love that because I love getting the feedback and speaking to people and doing all that stuff so um yeah i've actually had a you know, record-breaking amount of pre-sales you can go on ebay you can look for tokyo motor fist i think there's a lot of sellers selling it out there you'll have no problem finding it but if you want an autograph one look for the seller ted poley one that's me uh and i'll be happy to sign one and send it out for you fast and, and you'll see it really is a really cool cd it is um i'm loving it i'm loving the response and uh i i'm glad i'm, I'm really thankful for for your words on it so before we wrap things up here, just uh, a quick, what's going on now? Danger, danger, obviously doing festivals and stuff like that. Tokyo Motor Fist, are we going to see them on the road? Well, I would sure hope so. I mean, with everybody's schedules being what they are, you know, like I say, I mean, Chuck, you know, does the residency with Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden, which is slightly longer yeah, that's than anything <laughs> I could dream up. Uh, you know, Billy Joel, you know, when Billy needs him, you know, I can't really call Billy and say, hey, listen, man, I need your drummer for a hey, night. You, know. you should ask him if he could um, open up. Could we be the opening act? Why not? <laughs> you know, maybe nothing is impossible, but that probably is almost impossible. Right, right? yeah, I know. No, no, but we would love to. You know, the goal is not, a, it's not just a one-time project. We want to, we'd love to do, I'm sure, another album. We'd love to play together live. We're all actually good friends anyway. I've known Steve for 30 years. I've known Greg for you know, probably 20 years. And, and uh, we are actually good friends, which also comes through uh, you know, the tracks that you hear. Um, but our greatest wish would be to someday you know, do a festival here or there. I can't see an extended tour in the future, but uh, keep an eye out. Maybe a show here or there will we'll pop up somewhere. And that's what Danger Danger is doing nowadays, mo- mostly festivals. Yeah, you know, we fly to work with Danger Danger because we have to be a little bit selective. We do the bigger things now. Um, a lot of it is international. Um, and then, in the, you know, in between, I'm always out. I love to play. So I have a great solo band in the U.S., and you can catch me pretty much any time of year somewhere in, in Danger Danger or doing solo stuff or, you know, who knows, with Tokyo Motor Fist. And I'm telling everybody listening, and I plug it on my show all the time, that that album is probably one of the, you know, it's, and I, I don't like a lot of new music. From a lot of the the new the, the older band, they say older, but some of the bands when I was younger, but because they try to change their sound, but there's no change in sound on that. That Tokyo Motor Fist record is phenomenal. You know what? I think you know, 25 years ago, it would have been you. It would have been. It would have been. You're right. You know. Absolutely. And Danger, but, Danger, new music from them. You ever think that's going to happen? Uh, I'm asked every day almost about that. And you know what? Revolve is one of, is such a good record. Actually, surprisingly good. I think for a band from our era that put right. out something new these days and I think that's actually between you and I the best between you and I and your listeners don't tell anybody else <laughs> uh, I think it's probably the best Danger Danger record it's my favorite um, and I would hope that yes we would get together in the studio and do another one right now we have a lot of fun just flying to work hanging out doing a show rocking out and flying home so, you know and, <laughs> and that's, that's pretty much the extent and you can't beat that for fun but um I personally would love to do another Danger Danger record. It's not, nothing is impossible, but at the moment, I don't have uh, any, you know, there's nothing, no studio dates set. We are in a Decades Artist Spotlight tonight. The uh, the front man for Danger Danger, one of my favorite new bands, Tokyo Motor Fist, Mr. Ted Poley. Thank you so much, Ted. I know you're extremely busy, so I'm so glad you got to be on the show. I'm never too busy for you or our fans, and let me just please say I want to, 
send a special thank you out to all of your listeners for still letting me be able to live my dream at, at this age. I can't believe I can still do it, and that's thanks to all of you. I hope to see you all out there. And I have the best fans in the world, and I know that it, it, within the sound of my voice, there's got to be uh, a no-kill animal shelter near you, and that's my thing. And I hope that somebody will take a couple of bucks and donate to a local no-kill animal shelter somewhere near you. And uh, that's all I have to say. I'll see you out there on the road, and thank you, everybody, very much. Bang, bang, what's that sound? This is Ted Poley of Danger, Danger, and now of Tokyo Motor Fist, and you're rocking the decades with my buddy Joey Kramer. Spotlight continues. Now, here's Joe E. Kramer with this week's artist. We are on a Decades Artist Spotlight this week. We are here with Ted Poley of Danger Danger and Tokyo Motor Fist. You just heard Shameless from Tokyo Motor Fist. And since we have a little bit of time, I'm running early for once. This doesn't happen often. We're going to play another song off the uh, Tokyo Motor Fist, which I think you'll enjoy. Can't get you off my mind. Tokyo Motor Fist, Ted Poli on uh, Decades Artist Spotlight. I'm alright and I'm okay, but I think about you every day, and it's unrepressed. Believe in the sign. I know I've got to get you on my mind. Believe. 
Spotlight continues. Now, here's Joe E. Kramer with this week's artist. We're on the Decades Artist Spotlight. Ted Poley was with us tonight. Danger, Danger, and you just heard two songs from Tokyo Motor Fist. Type it in your web browser. It's available everywhere. Amazon, iTunes. Uh, of course, Ted Poley's Facebook page. Go there. It'll direct to the Tokyo Motor Fist. You can get it in stores. If you love melodic rock and you love the music of the 80s and the 90s and you love that kind of rock music, you will love Tokyo Motor Fist because it's Bare bones, man. It's fantastic. Every track on it is great. So thank you so much for listening to my interview tonight. It'll be online on our podcast starting on Tuesday. You'll be able to check it out again in its entirety. Our next interview will be with Astrid Plain of the group Animotion, who we had on the show a few years back. They have a new album out, and we'll have Astrid with us in two weeks. So make sure you are here. Two hours of Hairspray at 8 next Saturday night. So something to look forward to, right? Meanwhile, more Decades coming up right here. It is Decades on Total Reads Radio.